Well, Mr. McCabe, it looks like they're all here. Mm. The meeting will come to order. Most of you are wondering why this meeting was called. Well, so am I. But I do know we brought Sheriff Williams here two years ago to make this valley a safe place to live. And he's just about done it. And now, he wants to talk to you, and he must have some good reason for it. Sheriff Williams. I asked Mr. McCabe to get you all here because I figured the best way to avoid trouble is not to let it start. Now you all own cattle. Some of you, like Mr. McCabe and Clay Stevens, run big herds. Others are just making a start in a smaller way. There's been a lot of talk and arguments. It all sounds like trouble. It could mean range war. And that's something I don't intend to let happen. In a few days, you're all going to take part in a general roundup. With 20 brands or more to keep straight, there's bound to be arguments. And I aim to see that you don't settle them by looking at each other through a cloud of gun smoke. They're going to elect one of your old men round a boss. Somebody that's satisfactory to you all. And I'm going to back them up right across the board. Personally, I'm in favor of Sheriff Williams' idea. Nominations are in order. I nominate Ed Barker. Mr. Stevens is foreman. Well, what's wrong with him? I can tell you what's wrong with him in mighty few words. That's enough, Jones. We're here to pick somebody you all like. I'm sorry, Sheriff. Sheriff, it doesn't seem possible for us all to agree on one man. On view of that fact, in view of that fact, we'll stay right here till we do, if it takes all day and all night. If you don't, there'll be no roundup. They don't run as many cattle all told as any one of the big ranchers. Why should they have a vote? Oh, I... A man has the same rights in this organization, whether he owns 10 cows or 10,000. Please. There is one of the big ranchers I think would be good with us little fellas. I don't think he like us too much, but we know he is honest man. Who's that, Joaquin? Yourself, senor. We trust you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't accept. I'm getting along in years. This job calls for hard writing and lots of it. Uh, Mr. McCain. I'd like to suggest a man, and if we can't agree on him, I'm afraid we're deadlocked. Who is he? What's his name? My candidate isn't in this room, but he's Mr. McCabe's foreman, Tim Malloy. Good man. I've known him since he was a pup. He'll see that we don't get the worst of it. All in favor of Malloy for roundup boss, signify in the usual way. Aye. Contrary? Carry. Well, that's fine. All we've got to do now is get Malloy to accept. He's outside in my buggy. Will you bring him in, Jones? Yes, sir. Hello, Johnny. Are they about through in there? That's up to you. Up to me? Yep. The Sonora Valley situation just dropped right into your lap. Well, whoever dropped it can take it right back again. On the level. You was just picked to boss the roundup. Whoever did that must have been my worst enemy. Right. Clay Stevens nominated you. Stevens has always been pretty nice to me. He's always nice to people he's gunning for. He's got no reason for gunning for me. Sure he has. The best reason in the valley. What do you mean? Jane McCabe. <laughs> You've been grazing on the weed, boy. <laughs> All right. Be contrary about it. Come on, they want you inside. No, all right. You know what this is all about? Yes, Jones told me. Well, what do you say? Are there any strings to it? None. Run it to suit yourself. Your orders will be. Now, if I'm going to handle this thing, I won't be taking orders from anybody. That's the spirit, Tim. Do you accept? <clears throat> I didn't ask for this job, and I'm not expecting to enjoy it. But since you've elected me, I'll, well, I'll accept. But I'm going to try to see that everyone gets an even break. Yeah. <laughs> 
everybody. Malloy gives the orders. We take them. This meeting's adjourned. Here, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Put you in a kind of a tough spot, didn't I? Well, somebody had to do it. I figured you was the only one they could agree on. Now, it's only fair to warn you that somebody's trying to start a range war. I don't know why. If I did, I'd know who it was. Maybe they'll tip their hand on the roundup. Maybe. I've worked two years to try and straighten this valley out. If things break loose now, all that's wasted. Keep them out of trouble, if you can. I thought you promised to wait for me in the buggy and keep out of that meeting. I did. You see, they sent for me and I had to... I heard what happened and I don't like it. Now let them get someone else. Can't now. I promise. Jim, you say you love me. You haven't any doubts about that, have you? Sometimes I have. You won't let Dad stake you so we can be married. And now you let yourself be placed where you're practically a target for both factions. Look, Jane, this roundup will soon be over. We'll get everything settled then, huh? All right. Boss, I thought you always said it'd be easy to handle McCabe if it wasn't for Malloy. That's right. Then why put him where we have to take orders from him? You know the fighting's going to start on this roundup, don't you? Sure, we're going to start it. And Malloy's going to try and stop it. And something's very liable to happen to him. I don't want the cave to blame me. Maybe we finish the roundup without some fighting, no? Si parece. ¿Qué tal, Corporal? How's it going, Joaquin? This is all we find as far north as Griswood Canyon. Take a look at the brand on this critter, will you? my brand. What's wrong with it? Nothing. But what's it doing on this calf, Jones? Probably it's my calf. Hadn't that occurred to you? Then how come its mother wears a Stevens brand? I don't believe his mother is a Stevens cow. Well, you calling me a liar, Jones? I hadn't meant to. But since you asked for it, why not? Why? Espera, no ve lo que pasa. Drop it, Parker. So you're throwing in with the nesters, are you, Malloy? I'm not throwing in with anybody. Now, what's the row all about? I found a Stevens calf with his brand on it. Show me the calf and his mother. Well, it's got loose now. It'll take me a week to find it in this herd. But if you've got witnesses, you can take it up with the association, can't you? Now, you men get on your horses and join McCabe's outfit up in Blind Canyon. We're working for the Stevens spread, and I take my orders from him. While you're on this roundup, you'll take your orders from me. That Stevens gang has done nothing but hunt trouble ever since the roundup started. I know it, but I thought you had sense enough to keep out of it. I've took more off of them than I ever took off anybody in my life. I think Stevens brought them in especially to make trouble. 
I'm sorry, Tim. I'll put a twist on my temper from here on. Well, I'm taking no more chances. I'll put some of your friends to work with you. in a minute. Yes, sir. You ought to got here a little earlier to see the fireworks. What fireworks? Looked like we had things started, but Malloy popped up out of nowhere and stopped it. Malloy? You mean to tell me you let one man stop you? I gather you've never seen him make a draw when he really meant business. You know, I've met that hombre somewhere before I came here, and his name ain't Malloy. Never mind about him. What about those three Mexicans? Have they showed up yet today? Yeah, just pulled in. Just had a little talk with Sheriff Williams this noon. Suggested he drift out this way and look things over. I don't suppose you got any idea which trail he'll come by. I told him that Greasewood Canyon was the shortest. Malloy just told us to ride out to Blind Canyon. That's in the same general direction as Greasewood. Let him go as far as he likes, as long as he doesn't interfere with my orders. Will you be on hand when we get back with the news? Sure. Got some fire water over in the wagon. Thought it might put the men in a proper frame of mind to hear it. Swell. I hate to put you fellows back to branding again, but I've got to keep the big fellows and the little ones apart some way. But you are the boss, senor, and our very good friend. I reckon you're taking this stuff on home with you, ain't you, Mr. Stevens? No. Roundup's nearly over. I think my boys deserve a little treat. Put it away somewhere out of sight. Help yourself to a bottle. <laughs> I'd like to, but Malloy gives strict orders against liquor. Well, don't let him scare you. I'll take care of him if he finds out. afraid to take care of it for me. Thinks you might be sore. He's right. Hard enough to keep things peaceful around here when everybody's sober. The roundup's practically over. Why don't you let the bars down? Now, you and the other ranchers hold me responsible. I don't want to take a chance. I don't like men to tell me whether I can take a drink or not, Malloy. Here comes McCabe and Billings. Why not leave it up to them? Well, maybe you're right. Take it away, Pat, and make sure you break every bottle. Well, I'm glad you came out, Mr. McCabe. Had to find out how much longer this job's going to take. Well, if our luck holds out, we ought to be cleaned up by noon tomorrow. How's the tally running? Well, pretty low. There isn't an outfit in the valley that hasn't lost a lot of stock. That's bad. Reckon we're too close to the border. Sure. Any time a nester figures he needs a little money, all he has to do is head for the border with a bunch of mixed brands. You figure it's the nesters? The big ranchers think it's the little ones. The little fellows claim it's the big ones. Any fights yet? Squatters have already tried to start trouble with my men two or three times. Billings, you and I had better figure on spending the night here. Now, looks like it. Mm. That's fine. I'll have one of the boys put up your team. If I put the brand on my calves with the running iron, you will not think I rustled them, please. Of course not. But why don't you use your branding iron? They disappear. Why? How? Quien sabe? I'll go ahead and use the running iron then. But I'm glad you told me. Gracias, senor. <laughs> Say, how come you take those Mexicans off the drive? Because I'm trying to keep the nesters as far as I can away from those other cowpunchers. Oh. Well, I better go out and give him a hand, then. Nothing doing. If anything starts, it'll be here in camp. 
And we fellas have got to stay close together. ¿Qué dice aquel? Dice que estamos molestando. ¿Por qué está molestando? Sheriff Williams has been killed. Shot right through the chest. Where did it happen? Greasewood. Rusty and I were heading out with a bunch of cows just about sundown when we heard a shot off towards the mouth of the canyon. A couple of minutes later, we rounded a spur and saw a saddle horse standing on a trail above us. So we rode over to investigate, and there was the sheriff laying in the trail, deader than a pulled ox. And about 30, 40 feet away, we picked this up. Grand and iron, eh? Why, that is my iron, senor. The one I told you was lost. So it's your iron, is it? I guess we don't need to know any more, boys. None of that, Parker. No, oh, that plenty. Are you fellas going to let him stick up for this nester? No, I'll no, say. No. Take it easy. He didn't kill the sheriff. He's lying. He's been thrown in with the nesters all through the roundup. About what time did you say this happened? Well, just before sundown. Joaquin's my friend. I might lie to save him, but I don't think Mr. McCabe would. Mr. McCabe. Would you tell him what these men were doing about sundown? They were brambling calves till dark, and since then they've been singing at this campfire. That's right. It couldn't have been either Joaquin or his friends. You get your blankets and some grub and go back and stand guard. We'll be out in the morning with a wagon. Now, the rest of us better get some sleep. I want to finish this roundup by noon tomorrow if we can. I guess there's no reason to beat around the bushes to the purpose of this meeting. The tally sheets on the roundup show that we're all losing cattle on a scale too large to be stood for. We're here to decide the best means to stop it, and anybody's suggestions are welcome. Mr. McCabe, to my mind, there's only one way in which this matter can be settled. Levy an assessment on every member according to the amount of cattle he's got, and bring in guards to patrol the range till they get the rustlers. I agree with Stevens. It's the only way to handle it. And I move that we adopt the idea. Second the motion. You've heard the motion. Are you ready to take a vote? Uh, before you vote on this question, I'd like to suggest that you send for rangers before you bring in any privately hired guard. Especially since the death of Sheriff Williams has left us without a law officer. That seems like a much better idea to me. Well, there's only one objection to bringing in rangers. As long as they're with us, there'll be no wrestling. But the minute they leave, it'll start all over again. There's a stronger reason for not bringing in hired gunmen. Who said anything about gunmen? Well, you can call them whatever you like, but they're gunmen just the same. 
And if you bring them in here, you're going to start a range war. What makes you think that? Because we've been on the verge of one for months. The sheriff knew it. He thought it was going to break out on the roundup. That's why he called that last meeting. Who objects to our hiring guards? The small rancher. Am I right? You sure are. Why do you object to guards, Jones? Us little ranchers are in a funny position. The guards will think the big ranchers are their bosses because they're paying most of their wages. They'll start riding us little fellows and... They'll have good reason to if you ask me. What do you mean, Barker? Why, there were more funny brands in that roundup than I ever saw before. Running iron brands, cows and calves that didn't match. All kinds. If that's true, why didn't you call it to the foreman's notice? I did. I showed him a cow and a calf with different brands. He wouldn't pay any attention to it. Is that true, Malloy? He showed me a calf, but not his mother. It was my calf. And if the mother wore a different brand, it had been changed to make trouble for me. Does that mean you think I framed you? I wouldn't put it past you or any of the Stevens spread. Right. Don't move anybody. Mr. McCabe, it looks like your foreman has shown his hand. His interest is all with the nesters. We've noticed this all during the roundup, but we didn't want to say anything for fear of making trouble. Why this is so, I don't know. But it looks mighty strange to me that he backed men who are afraid to have guards look into the rustling in this valley. I hope we could get through the meeting without this, Stevens. But since you've asked for it, you're going to get it. Mr. McCabe, there's a faction among the big ranchers that's determined to drive the little ones out of the valley. They've already brought in hired gunmen. They tried every way they could to start fights during the roundup so we'd all be dragged in knowing the little fellows would lose out. They've even murdered the sheriff so there'd be no law to interfere. Malloy, you're calling me and my friends murderers. I didn't mean to include you. I've heard enough. If you're so partial to the nesters, you'd better join them. I have no further use for you as, as my foreman. Maybe you're right. Maybe I do believe side. I went through one range war on that side, lost everything I had. But if I'm forced into another one, it's going to be a very different story. If there's no room here for my friend, there is no room here for me. Follow us. You fellas better get back to your ranches and dig in. We may have visitors before morning. Well, I guess we're ready for the vote. All those in favor of bringing in guards? Aye. 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 What are you going to do, Tim? Well, who's got the most centrally located place? I have, senor. And everything I have is yours. Thanks. Now, if trouble starts, we'll all concentrate and walk in. All right. Oh, now, men, we're in for a war, and we might just as well admit it. The only way to end it is to hit hard and hit first. Stevens is about the only one of these big ranchers who really wants this war. I'd give a lot to know why. Ken hmm. sorry. If he didn't want us in the valley, why is all as the ranchers in the first place? I thought all you little fellows were homesteading government land. A few, yes. But most of us buy our lands from Senora Stevens. A few years ago, he owed much money. It looked like he would lose the ranch. So he sell parts so he can save the rest. Have you deeds to your places? No, not yet. Most of us still owe a little, a thousand dollars or so. Uh, why you ask? That explains everything. Don't you see? He can start this war and run you off your land, and it'll all come back to him. He'll have his original ranch, free of debt, and won't cost him a cent. You think a man would do such a thing? Think? <laughs> it's certain. Now, if nothing happens tonight, we'll see McCabe tomorrow, and I think we can get everything settled without any trouble.
It will be daylight in a half hour, Copran. You think they will still come? No, I guess we're safe for tonight. But I sure expected trouble. Well, I guess we'd better go inside and get a little sleep. We'll probably need it before we're through. Anselmo. Despiértate. Ándale, Panchito. Vamos adentro. Inside. They'll be back. Look out! Where is it, Joaquin? Are you hit hard? Too hard, Mirko Prado. Buddy's all right. You shouldn't have done that. That bullet was meant for me. I know. But you, you are. The boss and my very good friend. What's the idea of the meeting, Stephen? I don't know. I only heard about it an hour ago. McKay probably called it to talk over the night's work. Here he comes now. Did you call this meeting, Stevens? Why, no. I thought you did. No. Don't any of you know who posted that notice? No. Well, that's funny. Well, whoever did it ought to be here pretty soon. Might as well go inside and wave. Nobody told me anyone had been killed. They shot more than likely. Looked like Joaquin Ortega's horse. What's one Nestor, more or less? Joaquin Ortega was a fine man. And as ashes return to ashes and dust to dust, so do we commend all that is mortal of this man to the earth whence first it came. He was not of our race, his language was not our language, nor his customs our customs. But it has been written that greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. I waited about as long as I aimed to for the man that called this meet. I'll bet it was Malloy that posted that notice. What for? Maybe to show they're organized. And maybe for something more serious. This would be a mighty poor place for a pitched battle. You're right. Both sides would be cut to pieces. Well, we better drift out of town and keep out of trouble. I think you're right.
We got your declaration of war last night. If that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. But it won't be the kind of war you want, Mr. Stevens. You won't be able to pick off the ranchers one at a time because we're organized. You and your friends have done us a lot of damage. You're going to pay for it dollar for dollar. But there's one debt we're going to collect. You can't settle with money. The man that killed Joaquin Ortega is going to pay for that debt in prison. Do you know who did it? He won't be hard to find. He was careless enough to drop his gun. Cool thing to do? Reaching for your gun to see if it was there? He's lying. I never dropped my gun. Come in. Good morning. One of the boys brought out word you wanted to see me. I certainly do want to see you. Sit down. You seem to be sore about something. What's on your mind? I want to know what you intend to do about this confounded range war you got us into. Range war I got you into? Yes, that you got us into. You've destroyed a lot of property and sent half the belly gun in for the other half. Outside of that, we're right where we started. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mr. McCabe. After all, we have them off their ranches. And they made a fort of Ortega's ranch so you couldn't drive them off with less than 500 men and half a dozen cannon. They'll get tired of being cooped up there pretty soon and start drifting out in twos and threes. And do we have to sit around and wait until they get tired and leave? Well, why not? You're certainly not doing us any harm where they are. Uh... Morning, Mr. Stevens. Morning. Morning, Daddy. Hello, darling. The mail doesn't amount to much this morning, but I found this at the association. Thank you, dear. Huh. They can't do us any damage, can't they? Look at that. Well, they can't do that to us. They can't. They've already done it. And they'll keep on doing it. Well, I'll put a stop to it myself. No, you won't. I'll do it myself. I've had enough of your way of doing things. But well, what are you going to do? I'm going to send for the Rangers. If I'd have done it in the first place, like Malloy said, none of this would have happened. Well, you can't send for the Rangers. Why can't I? Well, the Nesters will make it look like we're to blame for the whole thing. They'd be more than half right if they did. Daddy, why don't you take the easy way out? What easy way? Arrange a meeting with Tim and his men. Agree to pay for their losses and call the whole thing off. Oh, you couldn't do that. Well, they split the whole range up again with their fences. If you don't want their fences on the range, Stevens, why did you sell them the land in the first place? Well, well Don't I... tell me. I think I know the answer. Now go see Malloy. Tell him we'll meet him in town at, uh, 4 o'clock. We'll pay all damages and call the whole thing off. But, Mr. McGee... You do as I say or I'll withdraw my support. And if I do, I'll take all the big ranchers with me. Billings, Allen, MacArthur and all. Well, all right. I'll go see him. I can't carry on this fight alone. Boss, you look sore. I am. I got an idea that'll cheer you up. Well, it'll have to be better than most of your ideas. What is it? How'd you like to get your hands on Tim Malloy? Have you got him? Come on, I'll show you. Tex Revell. Tex Revell? Sure. Don't you remember I told you that I'd seen Malloy somewhere before? Well, this is the fellow I was thinking of. Yeah? Here, look.
I got him here thinking he might come in handy. Looks like you finally got an idea there might be some good after all. Tex, shake hands with Mr. Stevens, the man I told you about. Hiya. Glad to know you. Yes, I sure am glad to know you. I don't know what you had in mind, Barker, but he's made to order for a little job I have in mind. What kind of a job? A cinch. Take him over to my place and get him shaved and cleaned up. While I try and find some clothes that look like Malloy's. We know we're licked. We're willing to make a cash settlement and call the whole thing off. All right. You bring out a committee made up of your big ranchers. Without your gunmen, though, remember. We'll talk terms to you. The cable will be waiting for you in town at uh, 1.30. I suggest you see him before he changes his mind. Well, we'll just have time to make it. How do we know this is not a trick to get us in there and then wipe us off the map? I'm your prisoner, the guarantee of safety. What do you say, Jones? I'll take a chance. All right. You and these six men come along. The rest of you stay here, just in case of a raid. Lead the way, Stephen. And remember, if it's a trap, you'll be the first to go. Your bunch of farmers had us on the run, did you? Well, they've got a new leader now, and the war's about over. How long do you think it's going to take them to find out he's not real? Uh, he won't be with them long enough for them to find out. Come on, let's get started. Can you ride herd on him for a few minutes, or do you want him tied up? Why tie him? All right, if Tex gets back before we do, tell him to wait. Come on. Sit down. You fellas round up the rest of the men and head for McCabe Canyon. We'll meet you there later. No, you don't. You don't mind if I write a little note while I'm waiting, do you? Sort of a last will and testament? Go ahead. But I won't guarantee it'll ever be delivered. You spell honey with an O instead of a U. That's what's bothering you. Thanks. I remember now. So what's the idea of keeping me here uh, all together in one piece? We're going to make a horrible example of you here in town just to discourage any more nester trouble. Oh, I see. That's liable to be later on this evening after the massacre. The massacre? What do you mean? Why, Tex. That's your double. He's going to send all them nesters up McCabe Canyon to raid the old man's ranch. But they'll never get there, because our men are going to meet him at the Narrows, and that'll be the end of the war. That's pretty clever, isn't it? Yeah, not bad for a bunch of amateurs. Get 
Archie. Careful of that gun, mister. It's got a hair trigger. Get in that closet and don't talk so much. Trying to make a getaway. Jump me, start wrestling for my gun. I didn't want to shoot him, but I had to or get shot myself. Well, this sort of changes our plans, don't it, boss? Plenty. You wait here till Tex gets here. Then tell him to join the boys in McCabe's Canyon. Then get out of town as fast as you can so you don't have to answer any questions. Come on, we'll figure out something on the way to McCabe's. That was the order, but I'm changing it now. I'll tell you if we ride along. Come on. Hurry, Jane. We'll be late for the meeting. been shot and his men are on the warpath. Malloy is shot. Is he hurt badly? I'm not sure, but I'm afraid so. Oh. Now, now, Jane. What happened? Well, I went over to see him, like you told me. He didn't seem to be very much interested, but he and his men went in to wait for you at the association. I stepped out for a few minutes. When I came back, it was all over. They'd gotten into a fight and Malloy was down. His men have gone off to get the others. They're going to sack every ranch in this valley, beginning with this one. What have you done about it? Where are all our men? I've sent riders for them. They're gathering in the canyon now, trying to head off Malloy's gang. Barker's in charge. are coming. Get your horses and join Barker's men in the canyon. When I get a rifle, I'll go with you. We better stay and look after Jane in case they get through our men. Well, let's get ready for them. McCabe sent us. 
Where's the nesters? Take it easy till we hear from the sentry. Now, if they're where I think they are, you fellas better go up the ridge and I'll go up here alone. Alone? Why, that's plain suicide. No, I figure I might pass as their friend Tex. Long enough to get a hold of Stevens and take him to McCabe for a showdown. Might work. Well, if it works, you wait till you see us pull out and then charge him. shot in town. That's what you think. I thought you was... Well, I'm not. Where's Stevens? He's gone to McCabe's. Doing some plain and fancy lying, I suppose. Sir, I reckon. You tell your men that you and I got business with Stevens and make them believe it. Something's happened in town. Tex and I have got a report to Stevens. Looks like Stevens wasn't with him. Stop. We'll soon know the outcome of the fight. It won't be long now. I thought you said Malloy was shot. He is. Here he comes with Barker. <laughs> That's not Malloy. The man I brought here to impersonate him. To impersonate him? Why, he looks more like him than Malloy does himself. If I didn't know Malloy was lying in town full of lead, I'd swear this was him. Text, meet Mr. McCabe. I was just telling him about you. I already know Mr. McCabe. I'm glad to learn he doesn't know your friend Tex. Proves he wasn't in on that massacre you planned for my friends this afternoon. It's Tim! Well, Lori, I... I thought you were shot. You walked right into your own trap, Stevens. The man you saw was your friend Tex. I'm able to prove now what I said at the association meeting. Barker here has told me plenty. Don't reach for that gun, Stevens. Unless you're pretty fast. It's Stevens who's been trying to drive the little ranchers out of the valley, so all their land had revert to him. This afternoon, he had a man impersonate me and try to lead them into an ambush. So he'd get rid of them all at the same time. What's more, he paid to have Sheriff Williams murdered. I'm holding him for that until the law arrives. I sent for the rangers last week. Never 
hold me for your rangers. Here come my men with what's left of your nesters. If you look again, you'll see it's the nesters coming with what's left of your gunmen. to jail and hold them for the law. All right. After what's happened, do you think we could start over where we left off? I'm, a, I'm afraid not, Tim. But if there's anything left after I've paid the nesters, I might use a junior partner. Think you might take on a son-in-law at the same time? I reckon you're asking that of the wrong person, son. 